So we've been talking about vastness, that these structures of the mind or habits of the mind, uh, <coughs> pattern, patterns of thought, which completely, <coughs> uh, continuously appear every day, maybe not every day, but pretty regularly, <coughs> and you are aware that those things you somehow believe, you believe them, although if you really examine them, there's nothing to believe. This idea of not being good enough, which is so common, if you really investigate that, it doesn't make any sense. How could almost everybody on the planet be not good enough? So then who's good enough? Almost nobody. So this clearly is a ridiculous um, structure, and you would be very well advised to examine it and try to eradicate it, because it doesn't really help you very much. And it's very common, and it comes very regularly. Anyway, there's a question. Should all vasanas be eradicated before attainment of realization? Or can a person still having vasanas obtain extinction of mind, mon monanasam? And then Bhagavan's answer, it all depends on the renunciation of the aspirant. So it depends on your, uh, the amount of renouncing you've done. <coughs> Viagra, which is renunciation, does not mean fasting for long periods, abstaining from the companionship of family members, not talking, etc. It really means not desiring anything, not even the state of of realization in which the mind has ceased to exist. <coughs> if one's renunciation is absolute, the denuded mind of such a one is not far away from being destroyed by the self. All vasanas are washed away in the scorching fire of perfect renunciation. Just as when a dam breaks its banks, the grazing cattle are washed away and become lifeless. So I think it's quite interesting that very often his uh, answers, um, he gets a question and people are somehow expecting some kind of uh, uh, like a, like, like a procedure or a practice that I can do and that will get rid of all my vastness. Very nice. Boom, boom, boom. I just turn the handle a few times and they're all gone. You see? But it doesn't work like that. You see? Because the vastness come out of your behavior. Yeah? For example, I've been going to Spain for like something like eight years, maybe more. And um, I've not found one student in Spain, not even one. And one of the reasons for, well, there are two reasons that come up. One is that for the Spanish people, it's very important to party, drink, and talk together. And so every Friday, Saturday night in Spain, in the, whenever the weather is good enough, everybody's out in the street eating together. Chit-chat, chit-chat, incredible chit-chatting, you see. This is somehow very, very important to Spanish. And when I had meetings on those Fridays or Saturdays, uh, people would say, sorry, I can't come. They couldn't come because they have to go and sit in the street and talk to their friends, gossip about life, and so on. So this is like a, an absolutely key importance for a Spanish person. So renunciation means that you would see that that is not going to really help you on the way to self-realization, that you'd be actually much better off sitting somewhere quietly and not engaging in all that chit-chat because that chit-chat can carry on vibrating through the whole week and then you start again the next Friday. You know? So th this is a kind of renunciation which serves the purpose of getting rid of the vastness. Not in a direct way, but in, a, in an indirect way. 
right? So this is a, it's very important to understand the way you're living your life has a profound effect on you coming to self-realization. You can't continue dramas, you can't continue relationships, you can't continue parties, you can't continue to go out and get drunk regularly. All those things don't serve the purpose of self-realization. I mean, I don't know his life, but probably Ramana Mahashi never drank alcohol in his whole lifetime. I don't know, maybe he never had sex in his whole lifetime. You see? But some people in our community start complaining if they're not having sex every three night, twice a week or something. You see? And then they have to deal with all the hassles that come out of that. You see? And, I mean, in the beginning of our community, I wasn't very clever about all those things. And I wanted to support freedom. So, for me, everything was okay. You can do what you like. Do what you like. You see? And then, gradually, um, it, I came to realize that um, much of what people are choosing to do is a kind of sabotage of themselves. So should I allow them to sabotage themselves, hoping that one day they will come out of it themselves? Or should I give some guidance and say this and this and this is not really a good idea? It's very difficult because I don't really want to disturb people's lives. But when people have lived in the community for many, many years, five plus years, and they're still repeating the same um, sabotages, what, what, what should I do? I don't know really. Maybe I should just say goodbye. That's one solution. And I've done that with quite a lot of people living in our community. And, um, but it's, it's very difficult because everybody wants the freedom to do what they like. But um, if you don't have the sense to renounce various things from your life, they will sabotage you. They'll only sabotage you if you want self-realization. If you don't want self-realization and you just want to have fun life, going drinking every Friday night is a good idea. You know, that's a good, good support to that lifestyle. But if you want self-realization, it's definitely not a good support. And um, so in our community, I came to notice that when people came into being couples, this was an enormous sabotage. Because then they didn't really listen to me. They, didn't, they weren't really in the flow of the community working together. And they gradually reduced themselves into a little happy love bubble where they both can agree with each other. Oh, yes, very nice to have a white shirt. Let's both wear white today. Yes, okay, fine. And maybe white trousers too. Yes, yes, good idea. And we need new shoes so that we got some, you know, and it's very, very common in relationships that in the end, you end up saying, you know, that you just keep supporting the other's bullshit, basically. And there is the idea that you can have a particularly conscious relationship if your partner is a bit spiritual, you see. But this is not really... That. It's, it's a bit true to somebody who's never really had much relationship. And then I have trouble with people like uh, Alex because maybe he's not so experienced and um, Bonzo over here is not so experienced and then I feel, oh, it's my... I should make something available for them, you see. But it's very difficult to make it available just for them because then Rajem wants to have part of it too, you see. <laughs> and so on and so on. So it's very difficult, my situation. So I don't really know in the end what I'm supposed to do. So in what I'm gradually doing more and more is saying, you know, if you really want this, you've got to make some renunciation. You've got to, make, you've got to throw away the rubbish in your life. And if you don't want to do that, then what, what happens for me is that after a year or two, I say, well, this is a waste of time with this person because they're going out every Friday night drinking and chit-chatting and they've been doing it now for two years. Um, I think I just stop working with them and then I invite them to leave because what's the point, you know?